Have you ever finished up watching an NHL game and are just left speechless by what you just witnessed? Because that's how I'm feeling right now after just watching the Detroit Red Wings fall to the San Jose Sharks by a final score of 5-4 in overtime. I haven't recapped a Red Wings game on the channel in quite some time, so today I told myself I would make one of these videos following the Red Wings game tonight against the Sharks. With it being Patrick Kane's debut in the winged wheel, a home game against San Jose, I figured there would be quite a bit of talking points coming from this one and it would be a fun game and it was definitely a fun game if you were watching this and you're not a Red Wings fan if you're a Sharks fan or just an NHL fan in general you had a blast tonight before I break down this absolute gong show of a game I want to give my quick thoughts on how I thought Patrick Kane looked in his first game with Detroit I want to make sure I get this out of the way at the start because coming out of this game Patrick Kane making his debut is probably the last thing people are going to be talking about overall I was impressed with Patrick Kane he started the game on a line with Joe Valeno and Alex Dabrinkit his former teammate in Chicago and I I actually thought Patrick Kane was one of the Red Wings more dangerous forwards in this game. He didn't manage to get it on the score sheet, but he played around 13 and a half minutes at five on five and finished the game with an expected goals for percentage of 61.22. Had loads of chances, hit a post in the third period. I thought for sure he had his first as a wing. His patience with the puck and his vision was definitely on display. And this one had some real nice passes to Alex to bring it. Overall, I think for his first game with Detroit, his first game in like, I think 220 something days after coming back from hip surgery, I think this was a positive positive performance for Patrick Kane. Now let's talk about the game itself. Heading into this one, I was a little bit nervous because it had all the makings of being a massive trap game, a home game against one of the worst teams in the NHL. Patrick Kane making his debut. All eyes were on this game. It was a sold out crowd at the LCA. And this is one of those games where it would have been really easy for Detroit to take San Jose lightly, a San Jose Sharks team that has been playing much better hockey over the last couple of weeks and came into this game with a lot of momentum after a crazy comeback win over the Islanders in their most recent game and throughout the first period, it definitely looked like Detroit came into this game not taking the Sharks seriously. I thought San Jose was the much better team in the first period. Their forechecking was relentless and it was giving the Red Wings defense fits. It was really hard for the Red Wings to exit their zone. In my opinion, the Red Wings were lucky to escape the first period tied. That now brings us to the second period and I kid you not, I think this was the craziest period of hockey I have ever watched in my life, period. So Klim Costin would open up scoring for the Red Wings at 9.05 of the second period. Overall, I thought he played a good game and did a great job here on this opening goal using his size out front. And just a few minutes after Klim Kostin's opening goal, Michael Rasmussen would score back-to-back -back deflection goals on the same shift just 13 seconds apart. And then just 36 seconds after Rasmussen's second goal, Lucas Raymond would get in on the action and finish off a nice passing play, making it 4 nothing. At this point, it looked like the game was over. The Red Wings had blown the game open. They had chased Mackenzie Blackwood. You have Patrick Kane making his debut. The Red Wings are blowing out the Sharks. The L LCA is buzzing, everybody's having fun, and then the Red Wings just collapsed. Thomas Hurdle would open up scoring for San Jose at 14.08 of the second, so just 28 seconds after Lucas Raymond scored to make it 4 nothing, that Hurdle goal was short-handed, by the way. And then under a minute later, on the same penalty kill, Fabian Zetterlund would score on a breakaway to make it 4-2, so two short-handed goals for the Sharks on the same penalty kill. That is just inexcusable. I've seen a lot of Red Wings fans on Twitter kind of blaming Vili Husso, but at the end of the day, the, the Hurdle goal was a two-on-one. Zetterlin was a clear breakaway and that just can't happen. Those two shorthanded goals just absolutely sucked the life out of the LCA and seemingly sucked the life out of the Red Wings as well. Nico Sturm would then score a little over a minute later to cut the lead to one. And then with about 23 seconds to go in the second period, Nico Sturm would get his second of the game and second of the season. Those were his first two goals of the season to tie the game at four heading into the intermission. Just an inexcusable collapse by the Red Wings. You do have to give the Sharks credit as well going down 4 nothing in the fashion that they did, how quickly it became 4 nothing. Most teams would have just packed it in, but the Sharks didn't. But at this point, heading into the third period, I just knew the Red Wings weren't going to win this game. They did not deserve to win this game. And although it looked like for a minute, maybe they were going to, as Larkin would score to make it 5-4 at 13-20 of the third period, Thomas Hurdle would bury one with the goaltender pulled on the doorstep to tie the game, which brought us to overtime. And it didn't take long for Mikel Granlin to finish this one off. A nice pass by Fabian Zetterland on what was basically a 2 on 0 Dylan Larkin kind of fell down after a turnover, and that is all she wrote for this one. The Red Wings fall to the Sharks 6-5, so that is back-to-back, -back, just insane comeback wins for San Jose. I'm sure there's a lot of Sharks fans out there with mixed opinions on how the team's playing right now, because at the end of the day, you want the best odds at the first overall draft pick, but after the start of the season they had, it's nice to see them scoring goals the way they have been as of late, and for the Red Wings, this is just one of those games you cannot afford to lose. This is a team that's likely going to finish the season on the playoff bubble. 
They're in a very tough Atlantic division and you just can't drop a point the way they did tonight. For me, the only positive takeaway coming from this game is Patrick Kane looked really good. I don't even care that the Red Wings scored five goals. This is just an unacceptable loss. Quick little fun fact about this game though, thanks to Sportsnet stats. The Sharks and Red Wings combined to score six goals in three minutes and one second in the second period. This is the second fastest six goals scored in NHL history. The Nordiques and Capitals scored six goals in exactly three minutes on February 22nd of 1981. So they were just, you know, a couple seconds short of setting a new NHL record. But that is pretty much going to do it for this one. Those are all my thoughts on the Red Wings' disastrous collapse to the San Jose Sharks. As always, I want to know what you guys are thinking. So sound off on this game down below in the comments. If you guys enjoyed this video and you want more post-game recap videos like this in the future, please be sure to leave it a like. That's the best way to let me know that you enjoyed. And most importantly, if this is your first time checking out the channel and you want NHL content just like this all year round, hit that subscribe button and I will talk to you all again soon.